Hello everyone, welcome to 10 Minute Physiology. In today's video, we're going to talk about taste. So with that, let's give it a go. So before we talk about taste, I wanna bring in a general anatomy of the tongue. So what we see here on the tongue is that the tongue is going to be innervated by two main cranial nerves. The first one is cranial nerve number seven, also called the facial nerve. And the facial nerve is going to innervate all of the taste buds that are on the periphery of the tongue. The other cranial nerve is going to be cranial nerve number nine, or the glossopharyngeal nerve. And this is going to innervate the taste buds towards the back of the tongue. Now on the tongue, you have these infoldings, and these infoldings are called papillae. Now on each papilla, you have many different taste buds. And these taste buds are each going to contain five to 150 taste receptor cells. Now the taste receptor cells are going to be innervated by the sensory neurons. And these sensory neurons come from the facial and glossopharyngeal nerves. So the, when the taste buds release their signals, the glossopharyngeal nerve and the facial nerve are going to be taking these signals all the way up to the central nervous system for the brain to process them. So now let's talk a little bit about the taste receptor cells. So the taste receptor cells are what sense chemical stimuli. And they're actually these modified epithelial cells that have electrical activity. Now these taste receptor cells are innervated by the sensory nerves that, as that ascend into the central nervous system. And these taste receptor cells also have a high turnover rate. This means that they die and are replaced every few weeks. Now it's important to realize that the taste receptor cells are dependent upon the sensory nerves. And this is because the sensory nerves release trophic factors that prevent them from atrophying. So therefore, in order for a taste receptor cell to survive, it needs to be innervated by a sensory nerve. Let's talk about how taste is transduced at the cellular level. And we have five different things that we can actually taste. The first is going to be salty, second is sour, third is sweet, fourth is bitter, and fifth is unami. And we're going to talk about the signal transduction pathways for each of these five signals. So let's begin by salty. So with the salty stimulus, what we have here is a taste receptor cell. And in order to sense salty, the taste receptor cell needs a epithelial sodium channel. So the epithelial sodium channel, or ENAC channel, is a channel that is always open. So if a person were to eat a salty french fry, the concentration of salt in the saliva and in the mouth would be greater than the concentration of sodium inside the cell. So what would happen is that sodium would flow down its electrochemical gradient through the ENAC channel into the cell. Now when sodium flows into the cell, this will depolarize the cell membrane and it would open a voltage-gated calcium channel. The voltage-gated calcium channel would open, allowing calcium to flow into the cell, and when calcium levels increase in the cell, this would facilitate vesicular fusion, which would allow the neurotransmitters to be released onto the sensory nerve. And in this case, the neurotransmitter that's released is going to be serotonin, which I labeled with HT. So HT is just a shorthand for serotonin. So now let's talk about the second taste that we can taste, and this is going to be sour. So we have our taste receptor cell now, and what we have for sour is the TRP3 channel. So the TRRP3 channel or receptor. So the TRRP3 receptor is going to be responsive to protons. So protons are going to act to open this channel, which will allow sodium to flow into the cell. The sodium would then depolarize the membrane, opening voltage-gated calcium channels, allowing calcium to flow into the cell. The calcium levels would then increase, facilitating vesicular fusion. Now there is another channel that the protons can attack and this is going to be the potassium channels. So the potassium channel that we see right here is actually going to respond to protons. So the potassium channel when there are little protons in the saliva is going to be open allowing potassium to flow out of the cell. But when protons come in the protons are actually going to cause this channel to close. When you close this channel this means that less potassium is leaving the cell which would therefore act to depolarize the cell, which would further increase the calcium levels, which would therefore lead to vesicular fusion, releasing the neurotransmitters onto the sensory nerves. 
So the neurotransmitter that is released in this place is still going to be serotonin. Now it's important to realize that both salty and sour taste receptors exhibit a property called univariance. This means that once these receptors are stimulated, they lose information of what stimulated them. And the reason why is because both of them release the same neurotransmitter and both of them sort of have the same signaling pathways. Therefore, the identity of the stimulus is going to be determined by mapping. So the sour taste receptor cells are going to be innervated to different neurons and mapped differently than the salty neurons. So the brain has mapped things in a certain way so it knows which signals it's receiving. So now let's talk about the remaining three stimuli, sweet, bitter, and unami. So sweet, bitter, and unami go by the following signaling transduction pathway. So we have our taste receptor cell here, and this taste receptor cell is going to have a receptor. And this receptor is going to be different depending upon whether it's a bitter, sweet, or unami molecule. So this receptor for all three of these stimuli is going to be a GQ-coupled protein receptor. So when you have your ligand binding to the receptor, the GQ protein is activated, allowing it to interact with phospholipase C. This will increase the production of IP3, and the IP3 would move to the endoplasmic reticulum and bind to the IP3 receptor. This will allow the receptor to open, which will allow calcium to flow from the endoplasmic reticulum into the cytosol. So after this occurs, the calcium can then move to the TRP-M5 channel, so TRP-M5 channel. So the calcium will cause this channel to open, which will allow sodium to flow into the channel. The sodium would then depolarize the membrane, allowing voltage-gated calcium channels to open, which would allow calcium to flow into the cell. And then when calcium flows into the cell, this facilitates the fusion of vesicles, which releases the neurotransmitter ATP onto the sensory nerve. So ATP is going to be released in this case. So that's it for this video. I hoped it helped you understand the sensory pathways and the signal transduction pathways for taste. And I hope to see you in the next video. Thanks for watching and I hope to see you next time.